So thank you, David. Thanks again for having me on the show. So today I want to talk about a cool feature of SharePoint Premium. So autofill GPT-4 turbo powered columns. I'm really excited by this uh, feature. I reckon it's the best SharePoint feature uh, of SharePoint Premium so far. So a little about me. Uh, my name is Leon Armstrong. I'm head of content AI at IntelliJ. I'm based in the UK. I'm a Microsoft MVP in M365. You can find details below on how you can connect with me. I'm always happy to answer questions. So today I'd like to discuss what is SharePoint Premium, talk about SharePoint Premium autofill columns, give you a demo, and then give you some steps to find out more. So what is SharePoint Premium? So I'm just a little uh, brief um, intro. So SharePoint Premium is a set of cloud management capabilities that bring advanced AI automation and management to the business process at the center of every organization. So this is SharePoint. So SharePoint's all about content. So it's all about content experiences that optimize critical business document processes, content process, processing that organizes your content to maximize the value in that content. And then you've got content governance. So govern that content. So it's all about the content, the, the layer of, on top of, sh which is SharePoint Premium. So SharePoint Premium autofill uh, columns. So what are autofill columns? So they allow users to construct large language model LLM prompts, questions on a column. So using generative AI, and then that prompt is then grounded on the files within the library. So you could use it to automatically classify a file, extract or generate information from within the file. It's a new column setting for existing SharePoint document library columns. So you'll be familiar with text columns, multiple line of text, number, yes, no, date, no, choice, hyperlink, and many more. And you can have many autofill prompts um, columns per library. So once it's processed it with the generative AI prompt, it then saves the output as metadata to a corresponding column. And then you can use that metadata that's against the file in the SharePoint document library in search, workflow, or even for compliance labels. So here's just a quick little uh, screenshot summary. So autofill columns, so you create a column as normal in SharePoint when you're site is enabled for autofill, you get this autofill section where we can set it up. You then have the ability to type in a prompt. So in this example, I've put provide a 10 word summary, but I could change that to whatever I want. I can then test it, that prompt, while I'm creating it against files that are in the document library and see what it returns. So I can see my result of a summary there. I then save the column. And then it doesn't auto process files that are already in the library. So I then need to select which files I want to process. And then there's this autofill uh, button in there. But if you hang on in, in, the, uh, in this call, I'll show you how you can also do this via PowerShell. So once they've been processed, they take a few minutes. We then see the files and then we can see the 10 word summary beside the uh, document. So we could that be any generative AI prompts. And yeah, there's lots of good prompts around these days uh, going from Copilot to yeah, ChatGPT, et cetera. So some finer details, uh, they are powered by uh, OpenAI uh, GPT-4 Turbo. Uh, currently the only, only English language is supported. Lots of file types supported from CSVs to office files to emails to HTML to image files to text files. Um, then documents with sensitivity labels aren't, um, aren't analyzed and included in results. And the scope of the prompt is only is restricted to co the content just in the text file. So it cannot reference, say, other files, for example, at the moment. The pricing, so it's five uh, cents US dollars per page. Uh, so each process page in your document counts as one transaction. 
and the cost is the same for one or more prompts per page. So you can have multiple autofill columns in the page and you will only be charged uh, per page no matter how many prompts you have. It's the same pricing as other SharePoint Premium custom document processing models. So say unstructured, structured freeform. And then in order to do this, um, you will need an Azure subscription connected to your M365 tenant for Syntex SharePoint Premium pay as you get. So this is how I like to frame um, prompting and uh, yeah, the prompting autofill use cases that I like to recommend for the uh, for these columns. So you could use a prompt as an extraction tool. So read something from a file and put it into a column. So extract something. We could use it to classify. So determine what the content is in the file and what language it is. Uh, maybe pick out the document type. We could use it to generate new content. So from reading this document, generate a summary of the document. Let's format that summary into bullet points. Um, then we could use it to evaluate the content in the document. So yeah, may, maybe given some criteria, rate the quality of the writing, identify the main points. But then we could also use it to impersonate. So do any of the above, but from another perspective. So pretend you're a uh, health and safety officer, identify the most likely risk in this health and safety report or something. So I'm not going to read all this out, but yeah, your prompts are limited by your imagination. So I'll read out the ones in yellow so we could use it to generate a summary of this document in 10 words. We could use it to read a document and identify the spoken language and then cross reference it. So return it in the lowercase ISO 693 lang free, free letter language code or we could use it to extract the address of a sender and formulate a Google Maps URL linking to the address so you can navigate to an address of a sender found in an invoice, for example. So three patterns I would like to demo. So yeah, show you autofill columns through the UI, the configuration and some example prompts, then show you how to deploy autofill columns using PowerShell and then how to process existing files. So I'll just go to my demo. So we're just going to start with a new library. Let's create a new library. We'll call this Autofill2. And there we have a blank library. Let's add some files to this library. Now they've uploaded. Let's add an autofill uh, column to the library. So we're just going to do it the normal way. We're going to add a multiple line of text column, and then we're just going to do 30 word summary, and then we're going to go into this autofill section at the side. And then we're going to do uh, summarize in 30 words. And then we're going to test the uh, our prompt. And we'll see the results uh, chosen from uh, a file in the document library. Now let's have some show some other prompts. So we could do like the these are aviation incident reports. So they contain details about uh, aviation incidents. So the number of passengers on the plane. So now we'll test that prompt. It's come back with 162. So all of these prompts are doing is giving the people using the document libraries uh, more information without having to go into the document. Um, we could do, I don't know, a quick one. Count the number of words and test that. That will then come back with 153. So. I'll just do 30 word summary um, and save this here. I then save the prompt. That's then added as a column to the document library. These files are not uh, processed uh, automatically. So we then need to go into, let's just do a hard refresh. 
We then need to select the files and there is then a new autofill uh, menu here. So that will take a, a few minutes um, for the um, for these to be processed by the autofill columns. So while that's waiting, I'll just go to a library that where I've ran some autofill column prompts before. So this one um, here, I um, extracted the document title, but then I used a concatenate to add some uh, ex exclamation marks. I did a 10 word uh, summary. I did a recommend this Christmas song um, Base, summarize the document based on the, as the sentiments of the uh, the summary, suggest a Christmas song. I use this then prompt here to extract the airline. I extracted the document type. I summarize like a pirate. Um, I explain like I was I was five. Um, I yeah, there's a whole heap more com um, a whole heap more of prompts here, but yeah. I, you could use it as a tool to work out. So I had a million uh, million pounds uh, give compensation to all the passengers that it um, noticed that was on the aeroplane and then uh, show the workings, but also do it in US dollars, New Zealand dollars, euros, uh, for example. So now I'm gonna go um, and show you how this can be done in PowerShell. So this is all covered in my blog, so I'm not, I'm, yeah, not gonna go through the uh, code too much here, but um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new column called document type to this library that I've just created. We can then see it there. And now I'm uh, just going to show you how we could add the prompt programmatically using REST API to, um, to the library. That's all been done. I'm not going to dive deep into the code, uh, but if we visit the document type here, we can see that that autofill prompt has been added to, to the library using that PowerShell there. And now I want to process uh, one file in that library. So I'm going to target list item ID number one, the variables at the top, but I can just use this method here now to tee up a file for processing with those autofill rules. So if we go back to our library, uh, we will see one of the files here is in progress. So that is in progress for uh, the document type there. So that's the PowerShell. I've just returned back to my um, slides. There's some blogs here where you can see more details of autofill columns, uh, a general blog, and then a blog documenting all the PowerShell to automate it. So you could add autofill columns to your provisioning solution. So every time a project is added, it adds a, a summary column to the doc default document libraries. There's some more details on how you can find out more about SharePoint Premium and my, my blog there, where I blog uh, about most SharePoint Premium features. And then, yes, thank you today for having me on this session. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be on board. Thank you.